Hey everybody, happy fall. In this video, I wanna tell you about some cozy fall mysteries for October. Hi everyone, welcome to Book Talks with Miss Thomas. I have four cozy fall books that I wanna tell you about in this video. The first two are decidedly Christian books. The middle, the third, is a clean book, and the fourth one is secular. So, you know, help you pick your chapters that way. The first one, I finally, finally, finally got to Becky Wade. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it like book lover Amanda, but um, she has been talking about Becky Wade for the longest time. And so I finally picked up a Becky Wade book and I read My Stubborn Heart by Becky Wade. Can't do it. I gotta be me. <laughs> As much as I love Amanda, I just, I'm not Amanda. So by Becky Wade. And um, this one is a really sweet, lovely Christian romance. And I, you know, not typically a romance reader, but I enjoyed the daughter um, going into this house with her grandma. She goes back to this uh, home that her grandma had as a child to help her renovate it. And it's near a local church. And it's just a very sweet, lovely book featuring Kate, uh, this character, and her grandma. And um, I like that. And I love the elderly people. There were a, a lot of funny elderly people in this book. And I do. I love books with funny elderly people. So Kate goes um, with her grandma to this house and she encounters Matt. I guess this is Matt and he is their contractor and she finds herself attracted to him, but she fights it, fights it, fights it throughout the book because so that's, I think that's why it's called my stubborn heart because her heart won't let go of Matt, but she thinks we're just friends. You know, there's obviously something very cold and prickly and angry coming from Matt um, in waves and come to find out Matt was a ice hockey star and his wife, he had this beautiful, I think she was a super model wife and she died tragically very young and so Matt retires from his career on the ice you know he stops playing and he just gives up on life he doesn't want to deal with people he doesn't want to deal with paparazzi he doesn't want to go out in public he just wants to be left alone to grieve and he restores houses he helps people with uh you know home improvement projects in small town Pennsylvania uh, as he just sort of grieves with his grieves the loss of his wife. Now, um, Kate Donovan is taking a break from her job. She's a social worker and she's dealt with some kids who've been through some really horrible things that no child should ever go through. And she's just, you know, overwhelmed by that and needs a break. So she goes with her grandma uh, to work on this house and she finds herself around Matt a lot and wants to try and bring him out of his shell and find out why he's so unhappy. And as she does that, she's fighting her attraction for Matt. Now, I loved the um, the thing about this book about, I loved how she prays about every decision and God tells her, no, this guy is not for you. At least that's what she feels God is telling her. And so she respects that. And she, despite her stubborn heart, maintains that distance. Um, and that's something that I really appreciated about the book. So I loved this book. And the elderly people were just, they were a riot. You know, she gets together with the grandma and the grandma's friends. I think it's every Friday night for their weekly poker night. And they play poker. And um, so she enjoys that. And then they rope Matt into playing poker and it's just really sweet and of course the elderly people are determined to push Kate and Matt together and um <laughs> they have some rather funny attempts there so my stubborn heart and it was a lovely fall book I saw the leaves and thought okay it's time to read this book and I'm so glad I did the next book I read was recommended by Stacy at Wanderings with Stacy, and that was 
Boo! I've finally read Boo, and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to read that, but Stacy said, wait till the fall. It's really good. And Boo was, it was great. I mean, it was definitely a five-star read. There were times that I laughed out loud. So Boo is about this horror author, and um, he, I think his name is uh, Wolf Boone, <laughs> and so they call him Boo, and they, they build the whole town around him when he moves into this town, because because he writes horror books and he's very famous, very respected. I'm thinking like Stephen King in my mind. And then he finds the Lord and he meets with the pastor and he says, what do I have to do to be saved? And the pastor helps him and decides, uh, helps him to decide to give his life to Christ. And so then, and this is the beginning, this is not spoilers. So then he and the pastor go to the local restaurant and you get perspective from the local waitress. And she seems to be, in my opinion, one of the only like true, like sincere Christians, God loving Christians in the town. And she does not want anything to do with that horror writer. She usually finds a way not to wait on him when he comes into the restaurant because she resents that, you know, the whole town has gone nuts over horror fiction and she has to wear these vampire teeth in the restaurant and um, they serve all these creepy foods. Like they're French fries, but they put, um, you know, ketchup on them and then they become bloody fingers instead of French fries. And so a lot of that kind of thing. And it just, she really resents it and she resents the author for it. And one thing I loved about that book was that throughout the book, she says she tries to pray about it and she feels God telling her, you need to pray for him. You need to pray for him instead of hate on him. And she can't do it. And so she tries to do it and she struggles with it. And I have to say that struggle is real. I have been there. There have been people that I just really, really don't like. And I feel, you know, my friends say, you need to pray for that person. And I try and I find myself praying for ways to deal with that person instead of actually praying sincerely for that person. And so I loved that. I loved the way that that personal struggle was developed throughout the book. And the other thing was um, because Boo, his sincerity, his desire to truly give his life to the Lord is real, he's he doesn't want to write horror anymore. And so the Christians in the town decide to try and get him to not want to give his life to the Lord so that he'll go back to writing horror because that's what makes the town, you know, so successful. It's a tourist town. Everybody comes um, for all the horror stuff. If this guy stops writing horror, there are some people who stand to lose some, some things from that. And there's this one little old lady who is just awful. And she tries to really manipulate everybody into causing trouble for Boo. And it was just, it was funny and sweet. And I loved the, the way that the, the troubles of, um, serving God are portrayed in just an honest and a real way, but in such a lighthearted way. And I definitely highly recommend Boo. The other one I want to talk about is not specifically Christian, but it was definitely clean. And that is Murder with Peacocks. Now, this is um, just a really fun, lighthearted mystery, perfect fall, cozy mystery. Um, it's the first in a series, I believe. It says it's a Meg Langslow mystery. I've only read this one. A woman from my church loaned it to me. And thank you to Kay for loaning me this book. She did say I could say her name on YouTube. Um, this is... <laughs> mostly told from Meg's point of view and Meg is the maid of honor in three weddings and the first one is in the very beginning the book begins with this bridezilla her brother's marrying this awful woman who decides that she wants peacocks at her wedding and she just makes all these weird wild demands you know on Meg as the maid of honor and her groom's sister and um that's that was interesting that woman and her whole bridal party they were just horrid and then there's this other uh woman getting married and that is Meg's mother and Meg's mother is um you know her mother <laughs> she's she's a lovely enough person she's the mother but she does also make a lot of uh odd demands and requests she just sort of takes Meg for granted but she's also a good mom I liked her 
She is obviously divorced from Meg's father, but the father's still in the picture. He is this very eccentric guy who loves to read all the time. He's the local pediatrician. I think it's a pediatrician. He's a local doctor. Anyway, he's a local doctor and he uh, is making home improvements in the house. And um, he's just this fun, eccentric, lovable dad. And then there's uh, the third bride is Meg's best friend. And she she is um, just sort of laissez-faire about the whole thing. She, Meg can't get her into the, um, the bridal shop for fittings. And she just can't get her best friend to nail down any real um, commitments or decisions as the wedding is um, proceeding. <laughs> and so it was just three weddings. It was kind of chaotic you know Meg's trying to deal with these three brides and then there's a local uh, dressmaker who is off she uh, has been harmed I think she broke her leg is what they say I say I think because we find out there's a little more to that story but the local dressmaker is gone and her son is in there in her place running the dress shop and he has he has to take care of his mom's dog who's this little obnoxious dog that he has named Spike because Spike's always causing trouble and getting into things. And um, then Meg has this nephew who has a pet duck. And that was just really cute. I loved the little nephew. He was really sweet. I love a book with, you know, various generations and just cozy family vibes. And of course, in the excitement of these three weddings, there's a there's a death or a murder. There's this nasty, obnoxious woman who's in town and she's visiting and she just manages to offend all kinds of people. And she's just dreadful. I, at one point, had to put the book down because she was mean to the cute little nephew and it made me so mad. But she ends up murdered. And so... As Meg is trying to solve uh, the murder and be the maid of honor, she forges this friendship with the dressmaker's son. She finds herself attracted to him, but she doesn't think that, you know, that's really going to work out because there's a rumor that he likes Guy. I don't want to give anything away, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, but I really enjoyed Murder with Peacocks. Thanks so much to Kay for loaning it to me. The last book I want to tell you about is called Hotel Nantucket. Tucket. That's a secular book, but I didn't really see anything terribly offensive in that uh, book. It was an audio book that I was listening to. I will say in the very, very beginning, the main character is in a deep relationship with her boyfriend when she discovers some very explicit photos that he has been exchanging with their wine buyer because they both run a restaurant together. And so that's not obviously something you would expect in a Christian book. It's a secular book, but the book doesn't get real graphic or anything. It just begins with that, that the main character finds out that her boyfriend has been cheating on her uh, and, um, texting photos to another woman. And so she decides to end that relationship. She leaves the restaurant and she starts over working in Hotel Nantucket. And so she wants to be the manager of this posh hotel that's been renovated. It didn't used to be posh. Um, and the thing is, the hotel is haunted by a ghost. And that's why I say it's secular, but it's a friendly ghost. Um, she was killed tragically when the old hotel was uh, in a fire. And so she was trapped in the fire and she has, you know, she wants to avenge her death. And so she haunts the hotel because she wants somebody to call attention to the way she died. Um, because turns out she was killed by someone at the hotel. They trapped her in there. And so there's a little bit of a mystery in there, but I was just really drawn to the characters, especially the main character as she, um, you know, starts running this hotel and then she's attracted to the restaurant manager, the chef, and he's this very revered chef and he creates a drink for her that he calls Heartbreaker and he makes that drink for her. And so they have kind of a sweet relationship. She doesn't want to get involved with him because, um, you know, she's just had her heart broken publicly in this small town um, of Nantucket, but she, she does, uh, form a close relationship with him, you know, friends, and they work together. And then there were other characters in the 
book as well that I just fell in love with. Um, there was this woman who came in, her husband um, had an affair, I think with their nanny. And so she brings her two children to the hotel just to get a break until she decides what to do. Oh, and her dog. <laughs> and so her two children and her dog wreak havoc in the hotel, but they're lovable. And um, then there's this these two girls that are hired to work the front desk and one is just horrible. But if you like a good redemption story, uh, she did have some redeeming qualities. She's, she's horrible through and through, but you also have to deal with her positive traits and you have to deal with her as she confronts some of her own issues and tries to clean up her mess. And I loved that about the book. And then there was another girl that uh, worked the front desk with her that was just really sweet and kind and tried her best to just do her best all the time. And she was very admirable and lovely. And I just, I liked Hotel Nantucket. I thought it was a sweet book. The audio book was a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed that one as well. So those are some good, cozy fall reads that I can recommend to you.